Okay, so uh, we're going to start uh, chapter five. And so chapter five kind of shifts gears a little bit. And we're going to be looking more at uh, area. And that leads us into what's called integration. And so um, this first section is mostly um, just the idea of the area and how we can approximate an area under um, some irregular shapes and so not 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 just the uh, shapes that you're used to seeing in geometry, um, but more like curves like we've been working with. So, so this section is um, just kind of getting the, getting the concept of it <clears throat> and how do we approximate this, estimate the area. And then once we get to the next section, uh, we'll learn the actual calculus techniques for doing this. Um, so, First example we have says, suppose a soft drink manufacturer estimates that the marginal cost for its drink at different production levels is given in the table. Estimate the cost beyond the fixed cost to produce the first 600 cases. So, um, so we have this, this is what the cost function looks like as we go through the first 600 uh, units. And so we can see at different points along the curve what the, the cost, the marginal cost is. And so what we can do is we could we could do that. We're going to do this two different ways, or maybe three different ways um, eventually. And so the first way we're going to do this is we're going to kind of assume that the cost is going to stay fixed or level for the first 100 units. And then we'll reassess, see what it is at 100 units, and then we'll assume it's going to be level for the next 100, and so on and so on. And so you can see if we want to estimate um, the area that's under this curve, we are overestimating a little bit every time until we get to this one down here. This this one, I can't tell, it's probably not exact, um, but this one is definitely underestimating. These are overestimating, and um, so this is just giving us an estimate. And this is the way we can estimate an irregular graph like this. So um, let's figure out what this would be. So what we're going to do is the area. Um, is going to be. the area of each of these rectangles, or the, the estimate that we're going to give is going to be the area of each of these rectangles. So the width of the rectangle is 100. The height of this particular one is what the value is at at, uh, at 8, or at 0, sorry, which is 8. So at f of, f of 0 would be 8. So the width of the rectangle is 100. The height of the rectangle is 8. So that's for the first 100. For the next 100, the width of the rectangle is 100. The height of the rectangle is given right there. And right there is 6.23. So 100 times 6.23. The width of the next rectangle from 200 to 300 is 100. And all, as you can see, all of the rectangles will be 100. And so really what we're doing is we're multiplying 100 by each of these numbers, and then we're going to add them up. So multiply 100 by 8, we get the area of the first rectangle, 100 times 6.23, the area of the second, so on and so on. So 100 times 4.92 plus 100 times 4.07 plus 100 times 3.68 and then plus 100 times 3.75. And we're not going to do the next one uh, because the next one, if we if we found at F of 600 or M of 600, I guess, um, M, then that would give us the cost for the next 100 from 600 to 700. So we stop at this one because that gives us the last rectangle. And so then we add all these up and they should come to 3,065. Now, obviously this is an overestimate. 
um, because all of these rectangles are counting more than what we should until we get to this last one. It's barely counting less than, but it's not going to offset what we have in all four of these. All right, so that's one way to do this. And we can we could estimate on the lower side by basically doing the opposite. And let's try this again. Um, shoot. All right, so now we can do basically the same thing, but now we're going to start at the right side. And so we're going to assume for the first 100 units, the cost will be F of M of 100. For the second 100 units, the cost will be M of 200, so on and so on. And so we can do the same thing. And now you can see that the estimate is going to be too low because we're not counting these right here. And then we're over counting on this one, but again, it's not going to offset what we did on the first few. All right, so same idea, the width of each rectangle is 100. And so now we're going to get F of, or M of 100, which is 6.23. And then we get the next rectangle. So it'd be 100 times 4.92 which would be 4.92 there. Then we'll get 100 times that one. So 100 times 4.07 plus 100 times 3.68 plus 100 times 3.75. And now we do need to get, so there's the 3.75. Now we do need to get this one and that is 4.28. So the last part will be 100 times 4.28. So in both of these, we have six rectangles that we got to find the area for. Six there, six there. Um, and the only difference is we're changing the height. We're, we're looking at the height from a different perspective. Um, but in each of these, we're going to have six terms. So that's one thing to be aware of when you're when you're doing these is make sure you're accounting for every rectangle and you're not counting a rectangle that you should not be counting. So um, in this case, we don't need F of zero, M of zero. In this case, we don't need M of 600. All right. And then this estimate is 2693. And obviously this one is lower. This one is higher. So what the... the exact area under that curve would be somewhere between those two. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at a, another example. So here we have the actual uh, function y equals x squared. We want to estimate the area under the parabola. And so what we can do is we can divide this up into four four sections, four subintervals, and um, I mean four is arbitrary. But the idea here is if we if we divide this up into four intervals, subintervals, we can find the area of each of these rectangles and get an approximation for the area under that curve. And obviously, again, if we if we do it this way, it's going to be overestimating it. If we did it the other way, which we're going to do in a minute, it will be underestimating. So, um, so the way we're going to do this one, so the way this is set up here um, is called the, the right sums. So R for right, because the, the height of the rectangle is based on the height of the, or the value of the curve on the right side. If we do it the other way, it'll be determined by the value of the left side. Um, all right, so each of these rectangles have a width of one fourth. And so then this will be one fourth times F of one, F of one fourth. Width of the next rectangle is one fourth times F of one half. So, this rectangle, height is f of one half, width is one fourth. Then the next one, the width is one fourth again, and the height is f of three fourths. And then the next one, the width is one fourth, and the height is one. And so when we're when you're doing these, uh, you can, you can kind of do this a little bit quicker than having to go down and figure out 
where you are each time. Um, the width is one fourth, so we're adding one fourth to the X or the input each time. And so then all you have to do is make sure that you know how many you're supposed to have. Since we're doing R4, we've divided into four sub intervals. Um, we're going to have four terms in the sum. Okay, so one fourth and then F of one fourth. We're going to have Y equals X squared. So F of one fourth would be one sixteenth plus one fourth times F of one half would be one fourth plus one fourth F of three fourths would be nine sixteenths and then one fourth f of one would be one. And then we add all these up and we get 15 over 32 or 0.46875. All right, and then we can look at the other way. Um, so now these are gonna be the left sums. Now we do have one here uh, because the left side of this first rectangle is at zero. So they're it's, there is the rectangle there, but it has no height. So it's there, but it's not really there. So we'll call this one L4 for left for the left endpoints. And then we have four of them. And the widths is still widths are still uh, one fourth. But now we're going to start at F zero and then go F of one fourth. And then plus F of one half. Oops. F of one half plus one fourth, F of three fourths. And again, uh, we have four of these and we don't need the last one. So in this case, if we found F of one, that would be getting this rectangle, which we don't need because we're, we're gonna only going from zero to one. All right, so F of zero is zero. F of one fourth is one sixteenth. F of one half is one fourth. F of one, or F of three fourths is nine over 16. And then add all those up and we get seven over 32. All right, so the idea here um, is we can, we can approximate the area by dividing the curve what's under the curve and, and we're we're basically talking if it's not obvious we're talking from the area from the curve down to the x-axis um and so we can divide this into however many intervals we want and idea is if we take the limit so we, if we have n intervals and we take the limit as n goes to infinity as you can see in these uh, pictures here n is 10 here n is 30, here n is 50. And as you can see, um, the part that we're adding on in this case, or taking away if we were doing the other way, doing the left sum, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and so the, the idea is as n goes to infinity, then the rectangles will have very small width. The height will be exactly what the curve is. And then you get the exact area under the curve. And so that's the idea. Um, so let's look at the next one. <clears throat> so here we have just a generic curve and you can divide it into N sub intervals. So uh, divide, so we're, we're looking at the interval from A to B. We're gonna divide the interval from A to B into n sub intervals. And so we're going to call the width of each sub interval delta x. So delta x, now how would you find the width? Well, the the total distance would be b minus a, and then we have n of them. So the width of any particular um, s1, s2, s, si, would be b minus a over n. And so, we, and, and of course you probably notice when we're doing these, um, we could factor out a one fourth here um, and then just have one fourth times f of zero plus f of one fourth and so on. Um, so you could do that. And in the general case, the delta x is gonna be the same for each uh, rectangle. 
So what we have here, um, we're going to divide it into a certain number of regions, and we sometimes we don't count enough, sometimes we count too much, and it's going to give us a basic approximation. Now, this is the right sum because the height is determined by the right endpoint, not the left endpoint. So generally speaking, we have R sub N, and that's going to be, uh, here you got to be careful. So it's not F of A that determines the height. It is F of X1. So we have F of X1 times delta X plus F of X2 times delta X plus all the way up to F of B times delta X or F of X in if you like. <clears throat> But when we're doing the right sum, we are going to go all the way to the end of the interval, whatever the whatever the interval is. All right. And then if we wanted the left sum, we would start with f of a times delta x plus f of x1 times delta x plus dot, 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 all the way up to f of x n minus 1. So if we were doing the left, we would not count. The, we'd count this rectangle, but the rectangle would start up here. And we'd be over counting in this case. All right, so let's look at a definition. Um, area of the region S that lies under the graph of the continuous positive function F is the limit of the sum of the areas of approximating rectangles. So this is just what, what I said a minute ago. So here is our right sum formula. And then if we let N go to infinity and take the limit, then we get the exact area under that curve. And so the, and these two definitions are related. Um, the definition of the definite integral. So finding finding the area um, of a curve like this, we, we call it the definite integral. So if f is a continuous function from a to b, divide the interval into n subintervals of equal width, which gives us the delta x. Then we let um, each x0, x1, x2, and so on be the endpoints of these subintervals. Then the definite integral of f from A to B is given by this. And so we have, this is your um, integral notation. And so we call the F of X in this case, the F of X is called the integrand. And then the A and the B are the limits of integration. And we're going to be doing a lot more of this. Um, this is just to kind of introduce the idea, kind of like with the derivative. When you start with the derivative, you work with the limit definition of a derivative, just to kind of get that concept of what the derivative is talking about. This is the same idea. Um, we're, we're just kind of getting the concept of the integral here. And then once we get to the next section, the next, uh, the rest of this chapter, um, we will be, we'll be doing this in a more um, precise manner. Um, not using long sums and that kind of thing. We'll have we'll have techniques for doing this, um, but for now, this is this is how we're going to do it. So let's look at example three. Uh, function f is graphed below is the value of the so the way you'd read this the integral from one to six of f of x dx. Um, so we're looking in this case from the interval is one to six. So if we I want to put kind of a boundary here and a boundary here. Will the area be positive, negative, or zero? So um, if if we're looking above the x-axis, the area is positive. If we're looking below the x-axis, the area is negative. Uh, so in this case, we have some positive area, some negative area. And it, it looks as if, and there's no reason to doubt this, that this positive region is equal to this negative region. So these would cancel each other out. And then we have this negative region. So the integral from one to six of f of x dx would be negative. Um, again, positive and negative, these will cancel each other out. They're, they're the same area. And then we have this extra area that is negative. So the overall is gonna be negative. All right, what about the integral from zero to four of f of x? Um, so this one we have, so now we'll be looking there to there. 
And so now the negative area and the positive area are going to cancel each other out. So we can write the integral from zero to x, f of x, sorry, zero to four, f of x dx is going to be equal to zero. So that's how you, that's how you look at that. If the area, if the graph is below the x-axis, it's considered a negative area. If it's above, it's considered a positive area. So fairly straightforward idea there. Um, all right, so now the way we're going to do a couple of these in this section is with geometry. So we'll learn we'll learn methods for integrating this, kind of like you learn methods and techniques for taking derivatives. Uh, but for now, we're just going to kind of use we're going to use uh, the geometry of the shape that it's making. So hopefully you recognize the square root of one minus x squared is uh, part of a circle. So it's the part of a circle in the first quadrant with a radius of one. And so we need to find how much area is right there. So that is one fourth of a circle. So the area would be one fourth pi r squared. So the whole circle would be pi r squared. We only have one fourth. So the area of that region is one fourth pi r squared. Radius is one. So one half pi times one squared. So the area is pi over four. All right, then part B, um, integral from zero to three, x minus one dx. Same thing, uh, we'll learn a technique for doing this in the next section, but for now, we're just going to draw the graph and then look at the section. So let's make that be three. Uh, where it crosses here would be one, and that is important. And so we need to find the area of this. And again, the part below the x-axis is a negative area. The part above the x-axis is a positive area. Uh, so we could call this, so we're going to call it A for the area, uh, x minus 1, dx. And so we can split this up. So we have one area here. Um, actually, let's, let's do this one first. So the, the 1 to 3. x minus 1 dx plus the integral from 0 to 1. Actually, well, we yeah, we could call it uh, plus. Now, if we call this a to a 1, then we'll have the area of a 2 minus the area of a 1. So what's the area of a 1? So these are triangles. So we have one half base times height minus, and maybe we'd call it B1, H1, one half B2, H2. So one half, the base of this triangle is two. The height of this triangle, and you could plug in three into the functions, so that's gonna be at two. Minus one half, the base of this triangle, is going to be one and then the height is so even though we're going zero to one but the height is a distance of one so if you're, if you're doing it this way where you're you're getting the uh, lengths of the sides of the shape <clears throat> of course the lengths are always positive so um and then we're going to subtract this one because it's below the x-axis so then we have uh, one half times two is one times two is two and then minus one half, so the area is three halves. All right, and then one more example. And so you may have thought of this as we were looking at the left and right endpoints. Um, what if we did the midpoint? So if we do the midpoint, um, that should be a better approximation because each midpoint for each rectangle, if if we're basing the height on the middle of the rectangle as opposed to the ends, then presumably some would be above it and some would be above the curve, some would be below the curve. And so then we should have a better approximation. Uh, but that's just another way to approximate this um, 
these areas. So we're going to look at this one. Um, and we're going to find, we're going to let have six subintervals. And we're going to use right endpoints, and then we're going to use midpoints. So um, we are looking from 0 to 3. N is going to be 6. So the delta x is 3, b minus a, which is 3 minus 0 over 6. So delta of x is 1 half. All right, so let's uh, find the right sum. So we're going to find R6. And I'm going to just factor out the 1 half and then get all of the, the heights as we go. Um, so the first one is F of 1 half. Then we have F of 1, F of 3 halves, F of 2, f of five halves, f of three. So let's write those out. And like I said before, once you find the first one, you're really just gonna add this delta x to each x as we go. So distance is one half here, and we're just gonna go another one half as we move along. So f of one half, f of one, f of three halves, f of two, and f of 5 halves, and then f of 6. And we should have 6 terms, and we do. So now we'll just plug in the values of f. So f of 1 half is negative 23 over 28. And we're plugging these in to the function. Um, you, can, you can check my math if you like. Um, f of 1 is going to be negative 5. F of 3 halves is negative 45 over 8. F of 2 is negative 4. F of 5 halves is plus 5 eighths. And then F of 6 is plus 9. And plug that in the calculator, and we get the area is negative 63 over 16, which is the right end approximation. All right, we can do the same thing, uh, this time with the midpoint. And so you see the midpoint now, wherever the middle of the rectangle is, that's the, what we're using for the height. And so you can see on each one, we have a little bit too much on one side, we have a little bit too, too little on the other side. And so this should give us a better approximation. Um, but again, it's, it's still an approximation. We still are not gonna have an exact area. Um, so we're gonna call this M6. The delta X is still the same because we still have six subintervals from zero to three, so one half. And now, um, where are we gonna start? We're gonna start halfway between zero and one half, which would be one fourth. So the first height of the rectangle is F of one fourth. And now just add one half to get the next five, heights that we need. So one half, fourth plus one half would be three fourths. Add another uh, one half and we get five fourths. And then we get seven fourths. And then we get nine fourths. And then 11 fourths. All right, so we should have six again, one, two, Three, four, five, six, and so now we don't we don't have either endpoint because we're looking in the middle. But if we if we added another one half, we'd be beyond three. So there is that. All right. So plug in what each of these f function values are. So f of one fourth is negative ninety five over sixty four. Then we have minus 261 over 64, and then we have minus 355 over 64, and then we have minus 329 over 64, and then minus 135 over 64, and then plus 275 over 64. And then plug all that back into the calculator, and we get negative 225 over 32 that approximation. You can see they're a little bit different um, since we're, we're approximating these in different ways. They're not going to be the same. 
Um, and if it were the same, there'd be no point in doing it two different ways. So, um, so there's 5.1. Again, this is a this is a section where you want to make sure that you are um, clear on the concept. And if you're clear on the concept, the formula should be easy to use. Um, I would not recommend just memorizing these formulas without understanding what we're trying to do. And then in the next section, we're going to figure out how to calculate this exact area um, pretty easily. So it's some of these, most of these are not going to be too hard until we get to some of the later sections where we get a little bit more complicated, but um, we'll, we'll handle that when we get there. All right. So email me if you have any 